and welcome to Adventures in Pixie Land. This is going to be your weekly reading going from April 11th to April 18th. This space has been cleared and these decks have been shuffled and cut with your energy in mind. So we are ready to jump in. But before we do, let's handle that busy work. Please do not forget to hit that like and subscribe button. Don't forget to hit that notification bell below so you will know when Leo content is uploaded. Leo content comes out every single Tuesday. If you're feeling my vibe and would like a personal read, please click on that description box below. If you're really feeling my vibe and would like to subscribe, please click on that link to the Patreon account in the description box below. Patreon subscribers get a certain number of free monthly personal readings depending upon subscription level. Now, a little astrology before we jump into the tarot. On the 11th, we have a void, of course, moon at 6.48 a.m. At, at one Eastern Daylight Time. And 1.33 p.m., that moon, the weaning gibbous moon, is going to enter into Capricorn. So most of the day, though, you're going to be under the influence of Venus. Moving into Gemini, trying Pluto in Aquarius, while the sun in Aries is conjunct Jupiter in Aries. Now that Sun and Jupiter being in Aries means that passions are going to be running high. And that Venus moving into Gemini means that we're going to want to be focused on having better communication. Like we're going to want things to be really clear. So keep an open mind, keep an open heart, but also keep a really solid grip on reality. Okay? Communication is going to be key, especially when that moon moves into Capricorn, because then we're going to want to be focused on our goals, and working on those goals are going to make us feel good. This is actually a pretty good energy day. Just try to stay grounded with everything else. So on the 12th, we have a waning gibbous moon in Capricorn, trying Uranus and Taurus. Vexing topics require innovative and unconventional solutions. What do I mean by vexing topics? It means something you have been trying to fix repeatedly over a series of time, and every single time you've tried to fix it, what you have tried to use is things that you already know, and it did not actually solve anything. So, it's time to go solution shopping. You'll find the answer if you go looking. On the 13th, you have a fourth quarter moon at 5.11 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time. And then at 10.14 a.m., you have a void of course moon. That fourth quarter moon is going to be a last quarter moon in Capricorn, which is about letting go of responsibilities that are not achievable right now. Like, they're things that you need to be responsible for, but you just can't handle them right now. It's like a bills you need to pay that you don't have any money for because you don't have that paycheck yet to pay that bill. It's like letting go of that kind of thing for the moment. Not that you'll never pay for it. Just you have to wait till the money comes in. So it might be a couple of days late kind of thing. Now, uh, at 4.42 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time, that moon's going to move into Aquarius, which is where you're going to start to notice something new change here. So your friends are going to be helpful to you here. It's time to expand that social circle because that responsibility that you can't handle right now, somebody might just have a solution for you. On the 14th, the waning crescent moon in Aquarius, while Venus in Gemini is square Saturn in Pisces. So responsibilities might feel oppressive on this day, but running away is never the solution. On the 15th, we have a void of course moon happening at 11.16 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time. And at 6.57 p.m., that waning crescent moon is going to enter into Pisces. All day long, though, intuition will be strong. And you're going to want to reconnect with self today. You're going to need to really... Uh, gain more insight and start trusting more on your in on your instincts your gut 
is steering you the right way. On the 16th, the waning crescent moon in Pisces, sextile Mercury in Taurus. Your schedule may be busy, but you'll have a lot of uh, mental flexibility today. So having lots of different interests and lots of little, different little smaller projects to do all day long is gonna be your best bet. Jumping around a, a bunch is actually very favored that day. On the 17th, you have a void of course moon happening at 2.57 p.m. and then at 9.09 .09 p.m. that moon is gonna enter into Aries, it's both Eastern daylight time. Expect nighttime boost of energy. It may make you feel ready to jump into something new and exciting. It could be that like while you're relaxing, you know, winding down for your day, you see a commercial for something, or maybe there's a new show, and then an idea just sparks you, and you're ready to go off on a tizzy. On the 18th, we have a waning crescent moon in Aries, square Mars in Cancer. Something is going to bother you today. It's just going to be like under your skin. It's almost going to feel like a, like a Mr. Cranky Pants, like you should probably go eat a Snickers right kind of attitude happening within you but don't lash out at others okay be an adult you have a responsibility to get down to, this, to the real source of what that problem is where that's really coming from and then find a solution for it right and then find in that process as well a healthy outlet for your frustrations because it's not anybody's job to tolerate anybody else's toxicity and if somebody didn't do anything to you but you're but yet you're like you lashing out at them because you're frustrated then yeah you're being toxic right or if anybody's doing that to you they're being toxic leo april 4th through the 18th leo april 4th to the 18th Leo April 4th Leo April 4th to the 18th Leo, April 4th to the 18th. Leo, April 4th to the 18th. Leo, April 4th to the 18th. Leo, April 4th. Now I will clarify all these cards, but before I do, past, present, near future, someone to you, you to this someone, balance, outcome, summary. This is a general reading. Take what resonates and leave the rest. Just because the whole reading doesn't sound like the story of your life doesn't mean there's not a message in here for you. Also, there is no gender in tarot. You're either walking up to somebody and talking or someone is walking up to you and talking. And this whole reading is a conversation between two people. Okay. In your past here, chariot energy, that is cancer energy, that is moving fast, maybe moving a little bit too fast because if you peep this chariot card in this deck, why is that guy on top of the carriage? Where are the bridles and the harnesses on that ho those horses? How are they even pulling that chariot? How is he even controlling them? Seems a little reckless. You might have been running off 
done something a little reckless. It also could be in some kind of indicator with some sort of a vehicle or forward motion, possibly a vacation, maybe about a car or something of that nature because the chariot is that kind of energy. Death card. That is Scorpio energy there. It is about death and rebirth. We'll have to clarify that to really know what exactly that is. Knight of Wands. That is any fire sign. Aries, Leo, Sagittarius. How many on the Sagittarius? Also, though, is a card of Scorpio. So that's double Scorpio energy. You could have really been interacting with them. Four of Swords. That is putting something to rest or taking a nap. Also, again, can be an indicator of a vacation. The Wheel of Fortune, again, travel indicator, but that's also about luck being on your side. It is about uh, the passage of time, and it's about divine timing being at hand. Ten of Cups. That is your friends and family. That is a community that you're in. That is happy home, you know, sort of happy life. Uh, Queen of Cups, that's any water sign. Cancer, Pisces, Scorpio, heavy on the Cancer. Also a card of Gemini. Okay. Uh, temperance card, that is Sagittarius energy. But it's in the U position. So it's you're seeking balance. You're seeking even. Knight of Pentacles. Is any earth sign? Capricorn, Taurus, Virgo. Heavy on the Virgo. Also a card of Leo. So it seems like a, some decision or something that you do there. Possibly being in this balanced energy. Or is going to bring balance to this overall relationship. Um, outcome here is Nine of Cups. That is happiness. That is filling one's own cup. That's, uh, you know, it's nice, good, nice, good energy there. Ten of Pentacles. That is uh, work life. So there's some sort of happiness possibly with some work life balance for some of you. But Ten of Pentacles can also be just other communities. Like if you they could look at the difference like this feels like they're at home. This is their home. This is where they live. Right. Whereas for this. Like, there's more people here. They're not necessarily part of that person. So, it's it's in a public space. So, you're happy not just within, within potentially here with your home life, but also within your uh, professional life or with your um, friendly associates, whatever organizations you might be involved in. Emperor card, that's Aries energy. It's also father energy, or boss energy, if you will. It's making decisions. It's moved, it moves with, a, with intention. You have the intention of getting that nine of cups, of being happy in that work life, in that home life. Two of cups, within that relationship, that is cancer energy there, the two of cups. Uh, but it doesn't have to be a cancer it's just a relationship and it can be any kind again to me especially in these readings because i don't know everybody's life relationship is defined as a continued interaction between any two people okay so that's what it is let's get you some clarification <coughs> what is this chariot card about in leo's past wealthy man okay. somebody buy you a car what is this chariot card in Leo's past? Strength. What is this chariot card? Two of Swords. What's this chariot card? High Priestess. Cancer energy there with the High Priestess card, just like the chariot. Leo energy there with the Strength. Two of Swords. Minor Arcana. Justice card. Libra energy. You might have needed to use your intuition about a particular person. Yeah, because you might have been feeling very undecided about this person. But you most definitely wanted to make some sort of forward progress. I mean, this isn't your, your past. What's this uh, death card about? Adjudication. So a choice. That is, again, uh, Scorpio energy. What is this death card about? What's this death card about? What's this death card about? 
Queen of Swords, any air sign, Aquarius, Libra, Gemini. <coughs> Heavy on the Libra. Also a card of Virgo. Death and rebirth. Scorpio energy. Because of a choice. There was a choice to make here. And it seems to me more like it's an ending, Ten of Swords. Because you needed to make some head over heart decision here. Or you were dealing with uh, an air sign or a Virgo. You could have been dealing with a Scorpio and an air sign or a Virgo. And again, with the Wheel of Fortune, with time passing or luck being in, you know, turning in your favor, divine timing being at play. <coughs> what is this Knight of Wands about in Leo's past? Unexpected income. Okay. What's this Knight of Wands about in Leo's past? What's this Knight of Wands about in Leo's past? It's being funny. What is this Knight of Wands about? What's this Knight of Wands about? And the Knight of Wands is clarified by the Knight of Wands. Is any fire sign? Aries, Leo, Sagittarius, heavy on the Sagittarius, also a card of Scorpio. Emperor card here that's, uh, again, Aries energy. It could be a boss, a judge, an authority figure of some kind. The Nine of Wands can be inconsistent. It can be player energy. So maybe you suddenly came into some sort of money. Or somebody you know suddenly came into some sort of money. But it feels more like you came into some sort of money and then somebody else came sidling up here with like, hey, hey, nudge, nudge. I could use some help here with this Seven of Cups. Or it could be that uh, there's some inconsistent energy here. And that inconsistent energy is why your boss decided to offer you some more unexpected income. What is this Four of Swords in Leo's present moment? Sudden Wealth. What is this Four of Swords? Four of Cups. What's this Four of Swords? Two of Cups. What's this Four of Swords? The Sun. Again, Leo energy there. With the Sun. Two of Cups. Cancer energy. Four of Cups just not being interested. We'll look up the angel number 44. This would indicate some ghosting, really. If you were in this relationship with someone here and they were being inconsistent in the past with this Knight of Wands energy, maybe you found out that they were like some sort of player or something, or that they were playing a game. Maybe you found that, the, you know, you shouldn't have trusted them. You know, something of that nature. So you just decided to very suddenly just sort of take a break. Almost like you had your own little private tower moment with this person. Because something about the nature of this uh, relationship was illuminated for you here. What is this Wheel of Fortune? Privileged lady. What's this Wheel of Fortune? What's this Wheel of Fortune? What's this Wheel of Fortune? That flipped over completely. The Wheel of Fortune. So you found out some information, Page of Swords, about this privileged lady, whoever that is. Some sort of truth that was hidden before with this moon card energy. Pisces energy there with the moon. Pisces, Sagittarius with the Wheel of Fortune. King of Swords, any air sign. Aquarius, Libra, Gemini, heavy on the Aquarius. Also a card of Capricorn. There was some sort of truth here. You were in the dark about something before, possibly because of this privileged lady. Something you didn't know in the past about whoever these people are here for you. This air sign, this Virgo, or this Scorpio, whoever they are. 
and now you you you've learned something here you learned something about this what's this ten of cups eight of swords what's this ten of cups four of pentacles what's this ten of cups five of pentacles what's this ten of cups six of wands all right, so this has to do with your friends and family unit. Somebody could literally be in prison. Or it could be Eight of Swords energy where they're all up in their head with the lack mentality, Five of Pentacles feeling left out in the cold. But there's a need to conquer this energy, Six of Wands, to have a victory over it if there is going to be a Ten of Cups or within your community. You will have some sort of, of victory of stepping out of that sort of lack mentality energy. What is this Queen of Cups? Queen of Cups, any water sign? Aquarius, Libra, Gemini, heavy on, I'm sorry, that's air signs. Uh, cancer, Pisces, Scorpio, heavy on the Cancer, also a card of Gemini. What is this Queen of Cups? Eight of Cups, Justice card. What's this Queen of Cups? Six of Cups. Six of Cups. It's a card of Nostalgia. Soulmate Connection. You know this person. This person's using their intuition about their a connection of some kind that they are walking away from. So it could be a Gemini, could be a Libra, could be any of the water signs. But they're definitely using their intuition, being balanced. Perhaps, perhaps they have, uh, they could be offering you a promotion or perhaps they, they, have, they have been offered a promotion and they're trying to figure out what to do there. What's this temperance card? I mean, they could also be involved in the justice system that justice card coming out. What's this temperance card? Okay. So some sort of communication that's going to go back and forth with you and this person. This, uh, again, with the Libra energy right there, or the uh, courthouse, it's the making and the choice. This is like the justice card over there. Lots of communication going back and forth. Could be about some travel with that world card. Or you could be trying to bring something to a completion of some kind. Uh, but taking a leap of faith there and being in that Aries energy. Being that fool, you know. Being ready. You feel balanced about a situation, so you're ready. What's this Knight of Pentacles? Expectation. Moving very slowly towards something you want. What's this Knight of Pentacles? Eight of Pentacles. What's this Knight of Pentacles? What's this Knight of Pentacles? Okay, so the Knight of Pentacles is uh, is clarified by the Knight of Pentacles, in case you were wondering. It's still a bunch of your energy there. So you had some sort of expectation here, possibly of an apology, or of some work. Or maybe you were going to hear about a job. Like if you'd gone on a, say, a job interview and you were waiting to hear back from a job, this would be, that is. Um, you're going to be happy about it. You're going to walk right towards that Nine of Cups. What is this Nine of Cups in Leo's future? It's a new path, new journey. That's beautiful. It's exciting energy. What's this Nine of Cups? Ten of Cups. What's this Nine of Cups? Four swords. What's this nine of cups? Six of pentacles. So something was not equal before. See this person? It's, it's unequal give and take. See, this person's getting three coins. This person's keeping one. This person's getting two. Because this guy has weighed them and has decided this person deserves more. So it's an unequal give and take. And that is really what you're giving a rest to. And it could be coming from your family uh, unit there. Friends and family situation. So you're 
focusing on your happiness and that is is leading you down a pathway that is more equitable to you what is this ten of pentacles yeah what is this ten of pentacles what's this ten of pentacles what's this ten of pentacles mm-hmm Okay, so I look up the angel number 1010. Knight of Cups, any water sign, Cancer, Pisces, Scorpio. I mean the Pisces, also a card of Aquarius. Someone within your community is feeling left out here. They're looking towards the future. They want to set down some burdens. They're going to reach out and communicate with you. Possibly it's a water sign. Maybe an Aquarius. What's this Emperor card? Oil and labor. What's this emperor card? What's this emperor card? What's this emperor card? Okay, so this is you being in boss energy, thinking about the amount of work that this needs with this toil and labor, feeling worried, you know, you know. This is the hill you're willing to die on and trying to balance out. I'd look up the angel number 99. Trying to balance out that energy. Searching for a way to do so with this temperance card here. Careful, though, with this nine of wands and this nine of swords. Nine of Wands and Nine of Swords can almost like be bringing a tower in and of itself. Okay? That's not what you want. I mean, this is worry cards. Defensiveness and worry. Nothing can get through the defensiveness. And with the worry, you can bring your own troubles to them. Worries are prayers we don't want answered. Don't spend all this time worrying about stuff. But focus on the solution, not the problem. What's the Two of Cups? Mm, that's you. What's the Two of Cups? Because you showed up as Emperor Energy over here, Nine of Cups. What's the Two of Cups? Ace of Wands. What's the Two of Cups? The Devil. That's Capricorn Energy there with the Devil. It's also a card of toxicity. So, you are focused on your own happiness and it's going to lead you a passion to a passionate new beginning about something just be careful there of toxicity unless you're dealing with a capricorn the devil card upright is just a capricorn being a capricorn it's not that capricorns are all toxic if it was going to represent a toxic capricorn it would be in reverse and it's just that the traits that capricorn carries when balanced is beautiful and good it's a, they're a sign of mastery Okay, they, they really are very good at bringing things into the real, the 3D. But if you're not dealing with a Capricorn, then whoever you're dealing with, with this Devil card, is toxic. Because that's what it, why it's that way. Because the Capricorn traits are great in moderation, and when you start doing them in an extreme, they become controlling, they, become, they can become when at all cost, they can become aggressive. You know, every sign's got their ups and downs. It's just theirs comes out as toxicity when they're in the negative mind space. Advice for Leo, April 4th to the 18th. Advice for Leo, April 4th. I'm sorry. Advice for Leo, April 11th to the 19th. No, 18th. I lost my brain there for a second, didn't I? Eight of Swords. All right, Nine of Pentacles. That's Minor Arcana Empress card. That's Libra energy. That's Taurus energy. Okay, that's also um, a card of being single and successful and things of that nature. Four of Pentacles, trying to hold on too tight. Eight of Swords is what's going to put you up in your brain. Do not hold on too tight. And do not allow anyone else to hold on too tightly to you. 
If they're trying to get a vice grip on you, it's time to shake them loose. If you have a yes or no question you would like answered, this is the time to think it because this is the deck that does it. Message for Leo. Message for Leo. Get more information. Message for Leo. Abundance and a year from now. If you get more information now, you can build your abundance in within a year from now. Advice for Leo, April 11th to the 18th. Prosperity lies ahead, new moon in Taurus. Advice for Leo, April 11th to the 18th. Work through your fears, new moon in Scorpio. Advice for Leo, April 11th to the 18th. Luck is on your side. New moon in Sagittarius. What you don't see coming at the bottom of the deck. Believe in the impossible. Blue moon. The end of a tough cycle approaches. Full moon in Capricorn. Conclusions are within reach. Full moon eclipse. Don't let your past hold you back. South node. Okay, let's get you a fairy message. Message for Leo. Fairy star. We love the seven-pointed star, a symbol of our wings and not quite human form. Draw our star and we will come flying through the center eager to share joy, wonder, and wisdom with you. What I recommend, Leo, is that you actually, on one side of a paper, write down what it is that you're trying to, to figure out and like meditate on that, right? And then write it all out and then flip it over on the other side and find a picture of a seven-pointed star and draw that on the other side, fold it up, stick it underneath your pillow, and then hopefully that night you dream about whatever it is that you want to know most about. I hope that helps, Leo, because it is what I have for you. And just remember, as you go about the world this week, that you are a child of the universe, no less than the trees and the stars. And you have a right to be here.